Today I'm going to show you how to dress for your body type using measurements and they are going to make such a huge difference in the way that you see your body and it's going to give you clarity about how to dress your proportions. These tricks here for me when I learnt them were a game changer. They made a huge difference. Hi, I'm Shelley and welcome to Fabulous 50s. As soon as I learnt these tips, everything made sense to me and I worked out why I wasn't happy with a lot of the clothes that I was buying. So if you have any confusion about your body shape, stay watching. And for those of you who are watching, thank you, I appreciate you. Thank you to all the ladies in my community. I love my audience and I appreciate you and I thank you. Okay, let's get started. Step number one, we're going to take our tape measure and we're going to divide our body long ways into eight separate sections. Now the ideal body, the perfect body, which probably nobody has, would have eight equal sections. I'm going to show you what all those sections are and if you're like me you're going to fall short in the waist because I have a short waist. Uh, many of you will have a long waist, long legs, short legs. Uh, this will help you work out where you sit as far as long waisted and short waisted and it's really really useful. Don't obsess about getting everything perfect perfect. This is a guideline only and once you do it you're going to understand why. The first measurement is from the top of the head to the base of the chin. Technically all eight measurements from here on down to your toes would be the same if you were the perfect body shape. The second measurement you're going to take from the base of your chin to the peak of the bust. So technically here this measurement would equal this measurement in a perfect world. If your measurement is different to ending at the peak of the bust that's okay. Take your third measurement from the peak of the bust not from where you measured down. So just keep a mental note. The third measurement is from the peak of the bust to the natural waist. And your natural waist is where you curve in. If you don't have any curves on your waist, it's where you bend. So bend to the side and put your finger in there and that's where the crease is and do it to the other side. So you're gonna find out where the crease is and you can mark that. So for me, it's right here. The fourth measurement is from your natural waist to the crease in your leg. And that's the part of your leg that creases as you sit down. And the fifth measurement is from the crease to the mid thigh. And the sixth measurement is from the mid thigh to the mid knee. And the seventh measurement is from the mid knee to the mid shin. And the eighth measurement is from the mid shin to the ankle. Now we've done that step, you're going to have a really good idea whether you're long waisted or short waisted, long legged or short legged. Using my proportions as an example, from here to here and here to here is pretty much the same. But from here to here is short, here to here is the same, and then I fall short again from here to my knee. If I was the perfect body shape, that's where my waist would be. So just knowing that is really helpful for me because I can now dress to fill in that gap. And I do look so much more in proportion because when you look at me like that, it just looks like I'm, I'm too short up here. This is too long and then this only tiny little short bit here. We're just dealing here with subtle differences and I'm not very tall. I'm only 5'3", so this is proportionately a decent amount of space and dressed correctly, it makes a good difference. You'll find that on your body you're going to have something similar or you might have a longer waist than I do or you have longer legs. But when you do the measurement like this, it's worthwhile for you to put a marker on your body so that you can actually see it. What we can do with that, when you know it for yourself as well, we lengthen what is short and we can minimize what is long. And that'll bring our body into proportion. And using this technique, uh, along with the techniques that I've already shown you how to dress your body type, I'm sure you're going to have a much better idea of what really suits your body. The second measurement will be applied to measure the length of your neck. 
We'll work out whether you've got a long neck or a short neck and it's really important. Knowing this changes everything. This is how you measure it. You take your four fingers, keeping your thumb out, put it under your chin and against your neck. And if there's any room left, you measure with your other hand. So for me, I've got seven fingers on my neck. The average neck is four fingers. So if you put your hand under your chin and it comfortably fits with four fingers, you have a normal neck. So yay <laughs> for you, you're normal. And if you have less than four fingers on your neck, if you've got three or two, you have a short neck. And does that matter? Well, I think it does matter because the way that we dress our neck makes a big, big difference. If you have a long neck like mine, you can wear higher cut tops and details around your neck. That looks really good. And lower cut on me doesn't work because then I've got too much length. And when I learned this one thing it made so much sense because I tried to wear different tops that had a lower neckline and that never suited me, but I didn't quite know why. Now I know why. The length is in my neck and that's what I can show off. So I'm going to do a video about how to dress for your neck length. I'll do that next, but for this video, we'll just do the measurements. And if you have a short neck, when you're dressing your neckline, you take three fingers and place it below the collarbone. So right here is where your neckline would start or further down. So never from here up because that's going to shorten your neck and make you look shorter. And it's very simple to address to elongate the neck or to shorten the neck. So that will be in another video. And it's just practice, a matter of knowing what looks good on you and why it looks good on you. Give a thumbs up if you have a little bit more clarity than you did before. And subscribe to Fabulous 50s if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful week. If you'd like to see a video using real life body proportion examples, check out this video. I think you're going to love it. And if you're an hourglass body type and you'd like to know how to dress for your body type, check out this video.